Hello everyone! It's another spectacular day here at IS Kids Online. I'm Teacher Freddy, and I'm here to tell you to go ahead and give someone nearby you a shout out. Tell them, thanks for being here, or thanks for loving and caring for me, or even thanks for cooking me food and clean my room. Thanks for something for something that you can remember. Go! There are so many reasons for us to be grateful to God and to the friends God has put in our lives. That's what we have been talking about this month. Gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you, see how they help you. Did you know that there are a lot of ways you can express your gratitude? You can tell someone, thank you. That's a big one. Remember, people cannot read your mind. You can also show your gratitude through your actions. Like if you do something helpful or nice for someone in return. We will learn more about this in our Bible story. For now, let's stand up and worship the Lord, kids. Every up and down, I know you're with me Through thick and thin, I know you'll never leave Your perfect peace surrounding me Here and now, I know you see me I am found and you have made me free Nothing can stop your love for me worshiping God with you. And also, I love looking in the Bible and learning about God with you too. 
We've talked a lot about God's big story. In the very beginning, God created the world. People turned away from God and the world was broken. But God had a plan to make all things right. God chose one family, the Israelites, and promised to bless the entire world through them. God's people were enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years. When the people cried out to God, God rescued them. So God told the people to hold a celebration. Each year, they would eat a special meal to help them remember how God rescued them from Egypt. That meal is called the Passover. The Israelites continued to celebrate the Passover meal every year for thousands of years. Jesus himself celebrated the Passover meal with his friends and when he was on earth. And Jewish people still celebrate it today. Let's go back to that time and take a look at what happened when the Israelites were still in Egypt. After the Israelites had been enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years, God sent a man named Moses to lead them. Moses faced the leader of Egypt, the Pharaoh, and demanded that he let the Israelites go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to set the Israelites free, but then he kept changing his mind. Each time the Pharaoh changed his mind and kept the Israelites in Egypt, God sent a plague or a terrible warning. God sent frogs, God sent flies, God sent hailstorms, and many more. There were 10 plagues in total, and the last plague was the very worst of all. For this plague, every oldest son in Egypt would die. But God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Moses told the people, each family must kill a Passover lamb, put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the doorframe. The Lord will go through the land to strike down the Egyptians. He will see the blood on the top and sides of the doorframe. He will pass over that house and he won't let the destroying angel enter your homes. The Israelites did just as God told them. After that final heartbreaking plague, the Israelites were saved. At last, Pharaoh ordered them to leave. That would be worth celebrating. The Israelites packed up so quickly that they didn't even have the time for their bread to rise. So they baked flat bread without yeast. Then God led them out of Egypt to freedom. God said this to Moses. Always remember this day. You and your children after you must celebrate this day as a feast to honor the Lord. So the Israelites made a habit of celebrating Passover with a meal that included lamb and flat bread without yeast. This would remind them of the way God rescued them from Egypt. Fast forward to many, many years to when Jesus was born. Jesus himself grew up celebrating the Passover every single year. Jesus even shared the Passover meal with his friends the night before he died. And on that night, Jesus gave a brand new meaning to the Passover meal. Listen to how the Apostle Paul described it in one of his letters to the Corinthians. On the night of the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body, it is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. Jesus knew that he was about to give up his life for us and be killed on a cross. 
The bread was a reminder of how Jesus would give himself up for us. The drink was a reminder of how Jesus would allow his own blood to be spilled so that we can live. Do you remember how back in Egypt, the blood on the doors protected and saved the Israelites? In a similar way, Jesus' blood that he shed so long ago saves all who believe in him. Jesus died on the cross so that we could be forgiven and have a relationship with God that will last forever. Jesus took a habit of gratitude, the Passover, and turned it into a new habit of gratitude, the Lord's Supper or Communion. The Passover meal is a celebration of how God rescued the Israelites from Egypt. The Lord's Supper is a celebration of how God has made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death. Because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, for the last 2,000 years, ever since Jesus had that dinner with his friends, people have been celebrating what Jesus did for us by eating bread, and drinking wine or juice together. Some churches celebrate communion every Sunday, or maybe once a month or a year. But in every case, the habit is the same. This practice is a way for us to remember together the amazing way God rescued us. A habit like the Lord's Supper or communion helps us remember to give thanks regularly. That's really important for us to do so that we can live in a grateful way. This is what we should do. Make a habit of being grateful. There is so much that we can be grateful for. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to rescue us. We are grateful for you and your love and faithfulness to us. We can look back at the way you rescued your people from Egypt, and we can remember how Jesus died on the cross to give us eternal life. Help us to get into the habit of being grateful. Help us to remember to thank you and to thank other people as well. We love you, and we pray these in Jesus' name. Amen. It's pop quiz time. I'll ask you some questions and you can shout out loud the correct answer based on the Bible story you just heard. Are you ready? Question number one. How many plagues did God send the Egyptians? Was it 12 plagues? Was it 11 plagues? Or was it 10 plagues? Yes, God sent 10 plagues to the Egyptians. Question number two. What were the signature foods the Israelites will eat during the Passover celebration? Was it chicken meat and French toast? Was it pork meat and round burger bread? Or was it lamb meat and flatbread without yeast? You got it! Lamb meat and flatbread without yeast were the signature foods eaten during the Passover celebration. Last question. What does the blood of Jesus do? Does it clean dirty minds? Does it help people to repent? Or does it save all who believe in him? Yup, the blood of Jesus saves all who believe in him. You all did it. Thanks for playing pop quiz with me. Hey, IES kids, it's great to be here. Let's read the memory verse of the month together. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Psalm 136, one. Great, let's read it together one more time. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Psalm 136, one. One way you can make a habit of being grateful is by thanking God while you do things you do every day, like brushing your teeth, 
getting dressed, waking up, or going to bed. This month's verse is a great place to start. You can say the verse when you get up in the morning, when you brush your teeth, when you get dressed, any time at all. So this week, pick a time to say our memory verse and make a habit of being grateful. See you next time. Today we listen to the Bible story about Jesus and his disciples doing the Last Supper or Communion. This gives me an idea. Let's draw a wine cup. You can use either yellow or gold color for the cup, so it will look fancy. Let's do it! But before we start, we need to prepare these things. A piece of paper, black crayon or marker, and some coloring tools. I give you time to get them now. Did you get everything you need? Great! Later when you feel the video is too fast for you, do not worry. Just pause, do your drawing, and press play game to continue the tutorial. Come, let's get started! is on my side you're always there when life's not fair kept me from trying to run and hide so i thought so i thought that i should let you know Jesus took an old habit of gratitude, the Passover meal, and turned it into a new habit of gratitude, the Lord's Supper or Communion. He taught us a beautiful way to remember together the amazing way of Jesus give himself up and allow himself 
to be killed for us. And for the last 2,000 years, people have been celebrating what Jesus did by eating bread and drinking wine or juice together. Some churches do it every Sunday or every month. Others do it a few times a year. They use different kinds of bread or wafers and wine or juice. But they all do it to make a habit of being grateful for everything Jesus did. So Ice Kid, remember to make a habit of being grateful for Jesus. Through every up and down, I know you're with me. Through thick and thin, I know you'll never leave. Your perfect peace surrounding me. Here and now, I know you see me. I am found and you have made me free. Nothing can stop your love for me.